Welcome to Daily. Thanks for joining us. We're reading Hebrews chapter 10 today. Let's pray before we begin. God, thank you for your word. Help us to understand what we read today and help us to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name. The old system under the law of Moses was only a shadow, a dim preview of the good things to come, not the good things themselves. The sacrifices under that system were repeated again and again, year after year, but they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship. If they could have provided perfect cleansing, the sacrifices would have stopped, for the worshipers would have been purified once for all time and their feelings of guilt would have disappeared. But instead, those sacrifices actually reminded them of their sins year after year. For it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. That is why when Christ came into the world, he said to God, You did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings, but you have given me a body to offer. You are not pleased with burnt offerings or other offerings for sin. Then I said, Look, I have come to do your will, O God, as is written about me in the scriptures. First, Christ said, You did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings or burnt offerings or other offerings for sin, nor were you pleased with them, though they are required by the law of Moses. Then he said, Look, I have come to do your will. He cancels the first covenant in order to put the second into effect. For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. Under the Old Covenant, the priest stands and ministers before the altar day after day, offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take away sins. But our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. There he waits until his enemies are humbled and made a footstool under his feet. For by that one offering he forever made perfect those who are being made holy. And the Holy Spirit also testifies that this is so. For he says, This is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. Then he says, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. And when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. There is only the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. For anyone who refused to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and have treated the blood of the covenant which made us holy as if it were common and unholy and have insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to us. For we know the one who said, I will take revenge, I will pay them back. He also said, the Lord will judge his own people. It is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Think back on those early days when you first learned about Christ. Remember how you remained faithful even though it meant terrible suffering? 
Sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and were beaten, and sometimes you helped others who were suffering the same things. You suffered along with those who were thrown into jail, and when all you owned was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. You knew there were better things waiting for you that will last forever. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. For in just a little while, the coming one will come and not delay. And my righteous ones will live by faith but I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. But we are not like those who turn away from God to their own destruction. We are the faithful ones whose souls will be saved. So for the last few days, we've been talking all about the new covenant compared to the old covenant. And today we really get a picture of like the application of what happens when we really grasp our presence in the new covenant, what it looks like now with us being in the new covenant. Here's what it says in verse 19 and 20. It says, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. Remember in the old covenant, right? Only the high priest would enter the most holy place, and they would only enter once a year. One guy would enter enter it once a year. He says, right now, we can boldly enter the most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. Verse 20, by his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. He says, it's almost like Jesus' death it like opened a new pathway that never existed before where then we can go into the most holy place, which is absolutely amazing. Remember, the most holy place used to house the Ark of the Covenant, which was like the very presence of God. And he says the same, only we're actually going into the real most holy place, the actual presence of God. You see, the new covenant gives us a level of confidence and access to God that people thought like, unimaginable in the old covenant. It is amazing that we actually can experience the presence of God whenever we want. Remember, in the old covenant, people were always separated from God. There was always this feeling of being so far away from God. The people were kept outside of the tabernacle, right? And then like the high priest went into the holy place, but then like the most holy place, which is actually the presence of God, was just one man once a year, where now we can just walk directly into the presence of God. It's astounding. We have a different type of access than the old because these barriers of sin have been broken down. But there's there's another barrier that used to kind of keep people away from God as well. And that one's been broken by the new covenant as well. It's interesting because he kind of identifies this in chapter 10. In verses 1 and 2, he's talking about the Old Covenant, and he says this, The sacrifices under that system were repeated again and again, year after year, but they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship. If they could have provided perfect cleansing, the sacrifices would have stopped, right? It would have been done. For the worshipers would have been purified once for all times, and their feelings of guilt would have disappeared. But instead, those sacrifices actually reminded them of their sins year after year. Not only was there this barrier of the sin in their life in the Old Covenant, but also there was this barrier of shame, of the guilt of the fact of who they were. And there was nothing that could take that guilty feeling away from them. They knew that they had broken the law and there was nothing that could remove it from them. So not only was there a barrier of sin, but there was a barrier of guilt as well. In the New Covenant, that is completely different. Verse 22 says this, Let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. You see, the new covenant not only takes care of our sin problem, it takes care of our shame problem as well. Jesus not only had that sacrifice been like attributed to us to pay for our sin, but also to take away our shame that he said our guilty consciences have been sprinkled by his blood and it has been brought new right this confidence doesn't come because of us right when he says walk boldly into it verse 23 says let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope that we affirm for god can be trusted to keep his promises our confidence doesn't come from how great we are it comes from how great jesus is and he promised that he would forgive us and that we could have access to him so we trust him you see shame can still keep us separated from God 
even if we've been forgiven. And Jesus' sacrifice not only dealt with our sin, it dealt with our shame as well. Reflect with me for a second, okay? Have you been forgiven for your sins, but you've let the devil convince you that you should still stay away from God because of your shame, right? That you've been forgiven, you've asked Jesus to forgive you, but the devil has propagated a lie in your mind where you're afraid to come close to God. Maybe you're afraid to sometimes come to a church service, you're afraid to raise your hands and pray and speak to God, or you're afraid to open your Bible, you're afraid to come close and talk to God because you're like, I'm just so ashamed, so guilty of what I've done before. You have let the devil fool you into not accepting the fullness of the gift that Jesus has given you to not only forgive your sin, but to take away the shame as well, that you need to pray Jesus' blood, not only for forgiveness, but over your shame as well. Accept and let that shame disappear, that he knows nothing's been hidden from Jesus. He knew what you were going to do before he ever died on the cross, that he knew what you had done when he forgave you. He knows it all and he loves you. He does not want you walking around in shame. Accept the forgiveness, release the shame, and come near to him, right into his presence. Your father wants to be close to you because he loves you. Move forward by faith today.